Hi and welcome to The Wandering Turtle. We are going to talk about uh, the different papers that I use and uh, maybe some of the ones that I have used. Uh, there are papers that I love and there are some papers that um, probably were not worth the money put into them. But I still use them because they are uh, good for sketching and the like. The first one that we're going to talk about is fluid watercolor paper. And it is, you'll notice here, is acid-free, 140 pound or 300 grams per square meter. And this particular pad is a 9 by 12. Um, I normally all, will always buy block if I can get it because uh, for plein air painting you get less warpage and all that on the paper while you're working if it's super wet. Uh, cold press is not my first choice but it's my second choice. Rough is actually my first choice. I think there is better texture on the paper. This particular paper was really inexpensive and uh, by using it I found some issues with it. Uh, I'm going to show you a sketch that I did and um, you can kind of see that it it does work. It's not a bad paper. Um, the edges are curled just a little bit on this block. This one is only uh, secured on the top and the bottom so your edges if you wanted to keep those pinned down you'd either have to clip them or maybe tape them or something like that but this paper does work and for the cost that it was uh, it actually is a pretty good paper for the value great paper as far as I'm concerned for a beginner and um, the professionals will probably tell you that it's a it's junk paper, but I, I like the paper for what I use it for, and that's these sketches. So it's just, for me, it's practice. So that's the first one. The second paper is we're going to go up in, for me, desirability. And the next one up the line is the Langton Prestige, and it is a Dale or Rowney. Um, this one is also 140 pound. It, this one is a 14 by 10, but it is a rough uh, texture. So when we when we in the next video, I'm going to lay some washes on these, and you'll be able to see how the texture comes out on them. Um, I used to think that Dale or Rowney was probably the absolute bottom end of manufacture for different stuff, but uh, this paper proved me wrong. This is a nice paper to work on. It's better than the fluid, which you saw before. It's not as good as some of the upper grades. So that's the Langton Prestige. I purchased all of my uh, watercolors from either um, Jerry's Artorama or Dick's. I have dealt with Cheap Joe's and um, I keep going back to Jerry's because of the quality of the product. The prices of the product probably aren't a lot different between Dick Blick and Jerry's, but uh, I have never had to return anything to Jerry's because it's been less than quality product. All right, Union Square. The Union Square, this is also a um, 11 or excuse me, 14 by 10. And this one is also a block and it is a rough texture. I'm not sure if you can really see it a little bit. I guess it's not too bad, but the camera work for me isn't very good yet. You'll forgive me for that. I'll get better as we go along. This is a good paper. It's also a block. Easy to wash on without getting a lot of buckling. Now we're coming to my favorites. <laughs> uh, 
the arches is my first choice in watercolor paper and that's just a personal preference I've found that you can work and scrub and wash and do all kinds of scraping on arches and it holds up it also for whatever reason that the way the paper is made up it allows colors to just migrate and blend more evenly you can control it or you can let it just go wild this one uh, i work basically in 140 pound if i'm doing a really large work like a full sheet i will do 300 pound which is um the thickest i've been i've purchased this one's 9 by 12 this is also my favorite size somewhere around in here i don't normally go larger uh other than the two you've seen before <coughs> 12 by 16 would be the largest that I do on a normal painting. So, 100% cotton. Um, there's 12 sheets to a block. It, it's a little pricey. It's like $28 for a block. But I think it's worth it. So, for me, this is a, the most gratifying paper there is. Now this one happens to be in sheets. So this one I normally will use in the studio because I can back it against um, fiberglass or plexiglass, not fiberglass, plexiglass and do my painting that way where I can uh, do the studio work. This one is the same paper in rough grain, but this one is a block. Now arches is the other thing I like about arches is that they they tape on all four sides. So it's sealed on all four sides except for one small opening back here. And when I'm ready, I take a long, smooth uh, painting knife and just go around the edges and it releases the paper once I'm done. This is my first choice for anything out there. For plein air, for the studio, whatever. I just, I love Arches paper. This one, now I haven't used this a lot, but it is, let's see if I can turn it so you can kind of see it in the film. It's Windsor & Newton Cotman uh, watercolor paper. This is a block, so it's rough. It's sealed on all four sides, so that's I like that. Um, it is 140 pound, and this one is a 16 by 12. Now I haven't used this a lot because I don't usually paint something this large unless it's something for a commission. But it is good quality paper. Maybe not the best, but it's still Windsor Newton. They're a trusted long brand that's been around for quite a while. So that's, that's the sheets I like. Then I found a couple of items that I've experimented with. And it's multimedia artboard. Uh, it's relatively inexpensive. This is 11 by 14 and it's five sheets to a pack. Um, multimedia artboard. Now I've used pastel on them. I've used watercolor, I've used acrylics, and ink, pen and ink. So it, it has a lot of, it's just a different kind of paper. It, uh, I don't think too highly of it when it comes to watercolor because it's very non-absorbent. So it is a paper that I use when I do very thin coats of watercolor or acrylic or gauche, uh, gouache, opaque watercolors. Um, but it is a good paper. It's, it's fun to work with. It's a great sketching mode. And you can see here that they recommend it for acrylic, airbrush, charcoal, gesso, oil, pastel, pencil, silk screen, or watercolor. So I've used them for almost all of that. This one is 
the same thing only it's in black and I uh, especially in my pastel work I like working on dark or black backgrounds because I like to see the background of black and have the object just electrify come off the paper I am uh, I don't like to do a lot of background work when I do pastels. I like the figure, or especially the animal, to stand out from the crowd. And black background for me is the best way to do that. And the last one is by another well-known company. And it's Strathmore. And Strathmore makes a mixed media board, which is similar to the two previous ones I show you. This one, the paper is a little bit heavier than that multimedia board, but I can't really evaluate it because I haven't used it yet. But I picked it because of Strathmore. I buy things to experiment with, and I have a lot of a lot of experiments on my plate. So this one, uh, maybe later in the year, I'll take it and um, do some plein air work with it. So that is all I wanted to talk about in this episode. Those are the kinds of papers I use for watercolor and these last three actually for pastels and other media. Um, when we get further on, I'll probably go back and talk about canvases I use for oil. Uh, I'm not a huge acrylic painter. Um, I like my work to be able to where I can move it. Watercolors is sort of that way. Once you touch the paper, if it's a strong, dyeable watercolor, it's really hard to pick up. But that's why I like pastels and oils is because the oils don't dry as quick so I can manipulate the art and pastels you know if I really don't like it I can take a palette knife and just gently scrape the surface and take all the heavy stuff off and relay it and I can layer it blend it and we'll have a whole thing on that too so the first group is going to be about watercolor the second group is going to be about pastels and the last group I'm going to work is the oils and uh, we'll see how that goes I appreciate you subscribing to my channel thank you for any positive comments I like criticism as long as it's not wicked or evil or just derogatory those I will get rid of but I do like your comments thank you very much this is Wandering Turtle see you next time